Hello everybody, this is Rupali Malik reporting on behalf of Chess Space India. Uh, I am in conversation with the organizer of the Rilton Cup tournament, Jonas Sandbaum. Hi Jonas, how are you doing? I'm fine and you? I'm doing very good. Uh, the location is beautiful. Stockholm is, even in the winter months, is lovely. Uh, in fact, I wanted to ask you, um, this is the 48th edition of the Rilton Cup, Jonas. Um, it is such a successful tournament. Uh, how long have you been involved in the organization of this tournament? I have worked at Stockholm Chess Federation since the 1st of January 2000. But I have worked with uh, Rilton from the middle of the 90s. Middle of the 90s? Yes. Oh, that's a long time. And uh, the, what, what would you attribute uh, to be the reason for the success of such a long-standing tournament? 48 editions. Yeah. <clears throat> the biggest reason is the, the Rilton Foundation. Mm-hmm. I was uh, founded in the middle of the 80s. Okay. I think Dr. Torilton died in 1985, and we got a lot of money to the Rilton Foundation. I see. So uh, basically, with the money, you were able to organize the tournament uh, in a successful manner. Um, but usually to have a tournament where such strong GMs appear and are playing and also to su keep it successful, uh, do you, do you have, do you, what are the key challenges that you usually face as an organizer in a tournament of this level? Yeah, difficult question. Uh, there is a lot of challenge and one of them is, uh, now we start the tournament the same time as the World Championship in Blitz and Rapid Chess. That is correct. Yeah. And there is a lot of players who like to play that kind of tournament. Yes. And they chose to play it instead. Mm -hmm. another, <coughs> another challenge is to, to find a good place to play it. Oh, okay. And we have been very lucky. Uh, we have been uh, at Clarion Hotel for six years. Okay. And now we have changed to this hotel. I like it a lot. Okay. Continental. It's in the middle of Stockholm. Yes. And uh, I think the hotel and the uh, the staff of the hotel help us a lot. I totally agree. The location is absolutely wonderful. Uh, the fact that it is right uh, near Central Station, mm -hmm. it makes it so well connected. Um, you know, one of my biggest worries uh, when we were thinking of coming to Stockholm was how will we manage the cold? But, uh, you know, knowing that the hotel's uh, basement or the ground level is actually directly connected to the, st uh, the subway station, the mm -hmm. metro station, it just makes it so much more easy to manage. Mm -hmm. So, you know, if one doesn't want to step out in the cold, they can actually go and get a dinner and at, at the food court and it's all internal, it's all indoors. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, it's very, very conveniently located. I totally mm -hmm. agree with you. Uh, so, Jonas, tell me a little bit about yourself. I did learn that you are a 2100 rated player yourself. So, mm -hmm. could you tell our viewers a little bit about your chess journey? I'm uh, not so good chess player, but I'm a, I, I'm a very glad chess player. <laughs> uh, and I like to play chess. But my biggest success has been in... What's it called in English? Correspondence chess? Yes. And I play for one of the biggest clubs in Sweden called Schackklubben Rokaden, the chess club Rokaden. Okay. And uh, I have played chess since 1978. Mm -hmm. And uh, we have been quite successful, my club. Okay. Or, for instance, we have been very successful, but not me, but the club has the been very successful. Okay. Successful. 
And and what made you transition from uh, playing chess to becoming an arbiter and an organizer yourself? A good question. Uh, I started to work at Stockholm Chess Federation 2000. Mm -hmm. And uh, when I started, uh, Bolandin was the, what's it called? The head of the office. Okay. Yeah. And I worked as an instructor, but when he finished and uh, changed work, yeah. I started as the head of the office, and then it was natural for me to to work with the tournaments and also with with organization. Yeah, definitely, definitely. So that was like a natural transition as soon yeah. as you joined. The yeah. Okay, okay, the Federation. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, Jonas, do you have a message for our viewers of Chess Space India? Yes, I have. I'm very glad that so many players from India have joined Rilton during the last years. I think my friend Ingmar Falk has a lot to do with it. Okay. And... Uh, I hope to see a lot of English player even next and next year and so. Definitely, Jonas. I think with your organization skills and with the strength of the tournament, it is going to be very natural that this tournament is going to pull a lot of strong Indians to come and play, even if it's right in the beginning of your frigid winter months. <laughs> <laughs> but, but it's not so. But, but cold in Sweden more. Yeah, <laughs> yes, and it's really not a detrimental thing. I mean, this is one thing I want to tell our viewers that a lot of people may feel nervous about traveling uh, to Stockholm in this uh, month, but it's really not bad at all. In fact, we're enjoying ourselves here. Uh, on the rest day, we actually went and saw the palace, and it was really beautiful. And yeah. you know, the whole um, the the place is very well connected by the station, by the by, by the train stations and the trams, and as well as the subway. So. Uh, really not a big deal. I, I, as I said, Jonas, we encourage most Indians to come and play the Rilton Cup. And with your uh, organization, uh, I'm sure they'll have a great time. Uh, thank you so much for talking to us, Jonas. And uh, we wish you all the best for all the remaining tournaments that you organize. I wish you also. Thank you. Bye.